There is a hidden gluteal muscle that almost no one realizes is actually a gluteal muscle. And that's because it doesn't have gluteus in its name. Of course, I'm talking about the tensor fasci lati, which is really just this muscle right here. What you're seeing as it goes down in green and connecting at the lateral condyle of the tibia is the IT band or the iliotibial band. Now, the, I, the IT band, by the way, is not an actual structure. It's a region. Um, it belongs to a superstructure that we call the fascia lata, which makes a whole lot of sense because this muscle is the tensor fasci lati. It puts tension on the fascia lata. So imagine you were dissecting, right? You remove the skin of the thigh. And before you get to the muscles like the quadriceps or the adductors, which we can see here, or the hamstrings in the back, what you would see is a gigantic sheet of fascia surrounding the thigh. That is the fascia lata. And what happens is the TFL, because that's just easier to say than tensor fasci lati, works with the gluteus maximus and the gluteus medius to blend into this most lateral part of the fascia lata. So like, let's imagine you were looking, again, you were doing a dissection of the thigh. If you went to the most lateral part of your thigh, what you would start to see if you could, I don't know, maybe you have Superman vision or perhaps a microscope that probably be less fantastical. You could see the collagen fibers, which normally are scattered in every single direction, are starting to become more regular. They're starting to run more parallel to one another. And what that's doing is creating this highway of tension. And this highway of tension is what we call the IT band. The IT band is simply the most lateral and thickest part of the fascia lata, that connective tissue fascial sleeve that surrounds the muscles of the thigh. And again, it's the tensor fasci lati along with gluteus maximus and gluteus medius that are blending into and putting tension specifically on this IT band. So you could actually think of the IT band here as almost being like a hybrid between a tendon and fascia which is a really interesting thing because you don't see that very often inside of the body. Usually a tendon is a tendon and fascia is fascia. But here we see this kind of double duty being performed. So what does the TFL do in terms of its skeletal muscle activity? Well, just so you know, what it's attaching to right here is a spot that you can feel and palpate on your own body called the anterior superior iliac spine or the ASIS. Again, because we're all about shortening things and making it easier to say. So how do you find this? This is this bone, right? I don't even stand up. It's like this little chunk of bone right here. that You could just palpate on the front of your hip. That is your ASIS and the TFL is coming off of it. Now it's a little more lateral to it. And it's also coming a bit off of this iliac crest, which is also something you can feel. It's kind of like your body's natural shelf. It's like this ridge line. It's going to be here. And so it's coming a little bit off of that. That would be the origin of it. But its insertion is the IT band. And again, that IT band is then going to descend and it's going to insert on the lateral condyle of the tibia. But if we look at its where it's at, then you can see that it is going and running anterior to the knee joint, which means it is going to have an action of extending the knee, but it's not that great at it. Right, most of the knee extension is going to come from the quadriceps. Instead, this is doing a little bit of it. It's also going to perform a little bit of lateral rotation of the knee, which is really difficult to do because, I mean, if you think about the knee, the knee is mostly just like a hinge. But in order to get some rotation, which you have about 40 degrees of lateral rotation, about 10 degrees of medial rotation, or another way to say those, by the way, would be uh, internal or external rotation. So lateral rotation, external rotation are the same thing. Medial rotation and internal rotation are the same thing. So you have about 40 degrees of external rotation and 10 degrees of internal rotation in the knee. In order to do that, you kind of have to get into a squatting position. It's kind of difficult for me to show you. But like if you get into a squatting position and then you just start rotating your knees a little bit, you could feel it. Right? You basically, your, your knees are in the flexed position and that can kind of pull it off. Well, TFL is going to perform some external rotation of the knee at that point, but it's crossing the hip. So we know it's going to have to have an action at the hip. And if you look closely here, you can see that the muscle belly is traveling anterior to the hip. You can see it running in front of this giant chunk of bone on the femur called the greater trochanter. And you can 
feel that on your own. Uh, again, I'll stand up here. So it's about right here. That is going to be the greater trochanter. And trochanter, by the way, just means to run. So think like a horse cantering. Um, and so since it's traveling anterior to it, and here's the physical hip joint, we know this is going to have an action of flexion of the hip. And that is going to be a really big part of its action. However, what's a little difficult to tell because what we see in this muscle in isolation, you have to remember there's sartorius, right? There's the other gluteal muscles around here. And then the, of course, the rest of the quadriceps, how this, this muscles leverage that is when you put it together is also capable of internal or medial rotation of the actual hip. And so it is basically the way I like to think of the gluteal muscles. Right? Because remember, this is a gluteal muscle. It just doesn't say gluteus in its name. Right? If you think of the gluteal muscles as the deltoid of the hip, I think that's one of the best ways to really wrap your mind around what they are doing. Because if you do that, TFL is the anterior deltoid. So anterior deltoid performs flexion of the shoulder and internal rotation of the shoulder. So does TFL. Middle deltoid is going to perform abduction of the shoulder. So does gluteus medius. And then posterior deltoid performs extension of the hip as well as external rotation of the shoulder. Well, so does gluteus maximus. So if you actually put all those together, and by the way, gluteus minimus is also gonna work with TFL. But if you put all those together, it's kind of like you just created a deltoid for your hip. And so in this instance, you could really think of the TFL being similar to the anterior deltoid. It just doesn't say gluteus in its name. So most people forget, even those who've taken anatomy courses, forget that this muscle is indeed a gluteal muscle. It is the hidden fourth gluteal muscle. All right. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I want you to go ahead and find the link in the description below because this is a 100% free Ken Hub article. And I just want to show you real quick what we put in these articles. Now, this up here is a video that you can see a preview in if you are not a premium subscriber. But if you're a premium subscriber, you would have a full video that discusses everything I just did in greater detail. Then what we'd like to do is give you all of this text, right? This text exists to, it's kind of like a Wikipedia, right? This is an encyclopedia, but it's performed and written by anatomists and MDs, experts in the field of human biology. And what you see here is this breakdown. We put this summary facts table. You can see we discuss the origin insertion. By the way, this is for all structures, not just muscles. But then you also see our atlas images here. So now you can see the actual muscle belly of the TFL. And then you can see the IT band, which is just going to be traveling from here. And then if we go to here, you can even see a nerve that I haven't mentioned. This is called the superior gluteal nerve. This is the nerve that is going to innervate the TFL, right? And you can see all of this here. You can even see we put little um, icons here for sounds. You can see how these are pronounced. And as we go down, you see more information, more atlas images. And we even embed other 100% free articles here for you to just kind of continue expanding your learning and you're even going to find quizzes now quizzes are a premium feature but you should definitely go ahead and check these out because these quizzes are without question the single best way to learn your anatomy um, the way we design our quizzes is that you can do an exam quiz or you could do a study quiz. The study quizzes basically teach you as you go while the exam quizzes are there to test your knowledge. And then at the end of our articles, we also like to show you if there's anything relevant that is some clinical um, aspects to that particular anatomy. We define sources, all of this stuff. Now, this is all 100% free outside of, of course, the quizzes and the videos. But you can go ahead and check this out for yourself. And I want you to just, while you're down there, by the way, go ahead and like this video because it's small little things like that that actually help these videos perform better in the all-powerful YouTube algorithm. And also just leave us a comment down below to let us know what other videos you would like to see in the future. We're always wanting to create content that you actually want to see and not just assuming you want to see this stuff. But thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you in the next video.